Let's do uh, what we call over in the marketing department uh, a call to action. Um, DrupalCon Barcelona is coming up. That's right. Exciting. And you have the chance to invite some, all, some large number of the attendees to do something kind of fun uh, as part of a good cause right before yeah, DrupalCon um, Barcelona. That's right. So we are or we happen to be organizing the world's largest sailing race right around the point when the Drupal Con is going on. And this sailing race is a community driven activity whereby sailing clubs come together to, to kind of do this in the same activity for a charitable cause. And there's lots of potential to get people on the water around that period in Barcelona. Okay, details soon, but I'm I'm thinking it's going to be worth showing up in Barcelona a day or two early. Um, it's a harbor town, but I've never been on the water there as many times as I've been there before. So I'm kind of excited about this. So, yeah, yeah right? Yes. Good. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community and business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Audience. We are at, can you see it from here? Drupal Camp, Bristol, 2015. It is a beautiful summer day outside, absolutely terrible for being at a conference. Uh, thankfully, a bunch of people have shown up. I gave a presentation this morning. Are you speaking at the conference? I'm not speaking at this conference. You're just absorbing the glory that is the, the Drupal community? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, David Bishop, okay. how did you discover Drupal? Um, I was working in a large company in London and the IT, di IT director said, we're switching everything to Drupal. And I haven't looked back since. Hmm. What, uh, and uh, what version of Drupal did you encounter first? And what was your, what's your first Drupal memory? Uh, so that was Drupal 6 at the time. Okay. Um, and 7 was in beta. And we ran with 6 for a good while. And then in the last couple of years have moved over to 7. And now you have your own Drupal-based business. That's right. What made you stick with Drupal as a business person? Um, it's, it's a platform that I have not found any project I haven't been able to build on yet. So we've built e-commerce websites, we've built um, data processing websites, we've built um, event websites, we're one of the key ones we do. It scales well for performance very easily with all the caching, so it, it, it suits our needs very well. Right, give us, give us the shameless plug for your company. Okay, so uh, my company is 91 Consulting. Uh, we're an internet marketing company that specialize in websites for events, so exhibitions and uh, live performances and things like Bart's Bash, networked sailing events. Terrific. I will obviously link to that in the show notes. What's your favorite thing about Drupal? I think my... I love the the fact that there's a community site with with all the modules you can download and the way people are giving back and that's it definitely encourages you to to do that yourself where, where possible. Um, I find its flexibility is its key thing. The fact that you are not shoehorned in one particular direction, there is not a an architectural vision that kind of forces you to stay in one one style. You the fact that there's such flexibility at the data layer and then at the business, the kind of uh, the view layer and, and the presentation layer and how you can easily plug in your own HTML. It, it's just um, endlessly flexible and quick enough. You know, that I haven't, with the caching and with other caching options, you can get the kind of performance you need and it's very quick to develop, uh, very cost effective to develop. Terrific. So when you're having conversations with potential clients, do you tell them about Drupal and open source? Yeah, yeah, very open that we, we use Drupal as a platform. We're proud of that. So how do you present 
the fact, the, the advantages of, of, of open source to, to a potential client? Um, I think it helps, particularly because we're a small agency. Um, we're predominantly a husband and wife operation who also use freelancers. Um, we use it to give ourselves credibility, to show that we're using a platform that there is a wide community of developers using it and you're not being forced into something proprietary that only we can support. Ah, that's terrific. I like to say to people, um, when you're hiring a Drupal shop, you're actually hiring 20 or 30,000 developers all at once. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, a lot of people have your back. Yeah, and I, I think you, um, if for whatever reason that the, the personal relationship breaks down with the client, they've got options. You're not, you know, you're, if they're not happy with what you're doing, you're not forcing them to stay with you. They can always go and find someone else. And, you know, we're, um, certainly our approach is we, we don't lock anyone in or try to, um, if they want to go elsewhere, they can, but most of the time they stay and they give us more work. So as an open source service provider, you are held to the highest possible standard because they can walk away to someone else who, who knows how to use this um, quite common technology, right? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very healthy relationship we build with clients where they have the choice. Um, do you use the term the truck test here? Drupal no, passes right. the truck test? Oh, we're hit by a bus. Right. We, we would use a bus. Oh, okay. okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think that's a that's a key key element. So let's get into this. Talk about bots, bash, and talk about uh, uh, Andrew Simpson. So Andrew Simpson was a Olympic sailor. He got a silver in the 2012 Olympics. He got a gold in the Beijing 2008 Olympics in the star class sailing with Ian Percy. He was training for the America's Cup, the, the massive race out in San Francisco on, on the bay, and he was unfortunate that he was on a large 40-foot um, catamaran foiling, a very advanced technology in sailing, and these boats were still quite unstable because they, they were pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and this giant boat capsized and he got trapped underneath, and unfortunately they weren't able to rescue him. Um, after that point, there's been a lot of uh, changes with regards to safety and regulations and they now carry breathing equipment to help counter that but obviously this was a, a lovely chap who was only in his 30s had a young family and life was stolen away so the Olympians in the UK wanted to do something to um, in his name and to build something to, that would he was he was one of the big personalities in the sailing community and they wanted to create something which would follow in his um, drive to inspire the next generation. So they built this charity, they set it up and as part of one of the activities to kind of increase its promotion, we had this idea of um, organising a sailing race and getting, initially it was going to be just a collection of sailing clubs in the UK because we thought that was a possible scope. We were going to get 50 sailing clubs in the UK to run their Sunday race that they always do on the same day at the same time as a bit of a, a memorial service, I guess, to, to him. And we created a one-page website. We put it up, and within two weeks, we had 350 sailing clubs from around the world wanting to take part in this event. Okay. And we had to take a step back and go, what are we going to do? <laughs> we, we, we've, we've got far more interest than we expected. So, um, we want so the, the, the initial goal was um, memorial? Yeah, the initial goal was um, let's get everyone to raise £5. And if everyone raised £5, 2,000 people, we could raise £10,000. To be charity. put towards? To be put towards a charity to help them with their goals, which is to help um, get kids on the water, really. The all of these Olympians had had this experience, and and putting a small child on the water is a very empowering op opportunity because they suddenly have independence of a sailing vessel which they've never had before, and it can be a massive life building skill. Whether they go on to use sailing or not in the future, just having that experience can be great. So. The intention of the charity is just to get as many school kids on the water as possible. I was reading about some of the goals of the charity and the idea, one of the ideas that really 
resonates with me is that putting a young person in control of something important, something their own in uh, a situation where decision making, common sense, physical skill, all of these things have to come together is, is very empowering. Whether or not they sail, it can help them uh, understand who they are and, and perhaps make them better people in the end. Absolutely. You're, you know, you've, um, this isn't parental control. There are real risks. If you're, you're out in your own boat, you can choose where you go. You can go and sail in front of that ferry if you want, but there are risks in doing that. And you, uh, and it, yeah, it definitely develops a person's character because they, you know. So this is kind of, this is also kind of, uh, the, the opposite of, uh, the helicopter parenting movement, isn't it? Yeah. In a sense. Yeah, yeah, this is. (laughs) So we pick up the story. 300 international sailing clubs Mm -hmm. thought this was a good idea. Yeah. What happened next? Well, this was, uh, this was engendered from the fact that, uh, he was a a known Olympian in the, in the, in the sailing scene. And there was a lot of goodwill to, to support this activity. And so we had 350 sailing clubs and over the year that grew to 750 sailing clubs on, on the day. Which is, it's a good proportion. I mean, there was a massive proportion in the UK, but we had a world map that was covered in dots um, of where these different sailing clubs were. Talk about supporting this movement with technology. Yeah, so uh, the initial site was built on Drupal. Um, Didn't need to be at that time because it was only a one or two page site, although very quickly we started using... Um, the open layers module to create maps to reflect where people were around the world and that was a really easy thing to plug in. Um, we then we built a participant sign up. So that was a big step. We, we built this um, online process for people to go through a six page sign up where they gave the information, they told us what boat they were going to be sailing, they could sign up for a just giving fundraising page within the, the sign up process. And the sign up started to, to come in and we were starting to get the picture that this was going to be a busy and a popular site as we got near the event. Uh, we passed a few thousand people signing up quite quickly um, and the general momentum and the excitement, we were getting a lot of exposure in the sailing press because this was revolutionary. There'd, there'd never been a network sailing event. So this was historic from that point of view. and and because it was a new idea, there was a lot of people getting behind it. Um, we were fortunate that we we had the leaders, all the all the Olympians from around the world. They did these um, iPhone pledge videos saying, "I'm going to do Bart's Bash. Make sure you do it." And so that was quite powerful. Having someone from your country saying, you know, in Chinese, saying, "I'm going to do the Bart's Bash," um, and yeah, it, the the excitement built. As we got towards the day. Yes, I'm very interested in what the sailing community looks like. And it sounds like this Drupal site somehow was the catalyst to create international community where there, there, there wasn't one before. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I think, I think that's a fair statement. There is. So in sailing, there is um, an international sailing uh, federation and they run things like the Olympics but they are very much focused on just running high level racing. Uh, there is, in each country, there tends to be a sailing organization. So you have US sailing in America, you have the RAA in, in the UK, but there's a, there isn't an international body trying to encourage grassroots sailing and supporting sailing clubs or bringing them together in an, at an at a amateur level uh, in an international sense. And this, this became one of the fascinating and empowering things of the event uh, or the website as it as it built through the year was we were getting clubs in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago putting their club page together, showing sailors in the same boats as kids in the UK, but coming off beaches with palm trees. And and this this was a very exciting thing. And, and the, the schools got involved because they, you know, because it was it was something that reflected people doing the same thing as you all the way around the world. Um, and that built a lot of momentum towards towards the day. Um, and that, so, you know, clubs were able to create these profile pages that we put on there. And there were two, I think, 
strong community engaging tools that we used. One was the ability to create this directory of all these sailing clubs, which didn't exist before we created it. Uh huh. And this is now a spontaneously community created directory yeah. of of sailing clubs, which is kind of exciting. Yes, abs- abs- absolutely. And secondly, it was how we use Drupal and lots and lots of breakdowns of views to show lots of top tens of different um, boat classes and different countries to show the volume of people signing up so that you could see this momentum. So f- literally from a one, two page brochure announcement site, you seamlessly scaled into quite a complex application. Yeah. And um, at the same time, when you got to the event, you were you were also fulfilling the requirements to apply to have a Guinness record for the largest sailing race ever. And what I was particularly fascinated by is is um, the 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 work and the effort and the technical side of of how you how you posted the results in the end because because I, 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 that sounded uh, pretty interesting to me when I read about it. Yeah. So we had. Um... We knew we were going to be, have this challenge. One, at its heart, this was a race. People were buying into the idea of the world's wackiest, wackiest sailing race. You know, that, that's what they that's what they wanted to be a part of. So we had we had massive sixty foot um, super yachts racing on the same start line as seven foot Optimus, which are very tiny sailing boats for kids. About the, as big as where we're sitting now. Yeah, about, <laughs> about the size of a dining dining room table, and. Um, we needed some way of rating these. And, and in sailing, there'd never been a rating system for racing yachts against dinghies. And we also had wind surfers and we had kite surfing. So we, we wanted to measure this so that everyone could see where they came in the world's largest sailing race. You know, if it's going to be a race, a race has to have results. So we worked with the Royal Yachting Association to come up with a new handicapping system called the BART number, whereby we actually produced a new scale and we brought a few of the existing measurement systems together to to be able to race these different boats in in different places and of different sizes at the same time. And does the BART number take the local conditions into account as well? Or is that a separate calculation? It, it doesn't take wind conditions into account, but we did group the results by wind condition to help you see. And we do also group the results by, we had what we called rookies who were this was their first time their first race ever and then we had classes like olympians so it was only olympians that were in that class and club racers who so how did you build this results calculator in drupal so uh, in drupal we had uh there were two challenges one was collecting the results from all these sailing clubs um and sailing clubs traditionally work with csv files so they were happy with that concept, although we realized on the day that actually asking 750 different teams to create a CSV file to one standard was problematic. Um, it's a, certainly a migration challenge in the end. Yeah, so, so, we, so they all uploaded their own data and then we, we had to do some, some tweaking to get that to work. But then we, I used Drupal and I used um, Drush and I used Cron Jobs and we built this little engine that crunched through and it validated that the, it had all the values it required and then it um, did the calculations and I mean that was to be fair that was one of these great things that you just using Drupal um, I didn't know I'd never used Drupal as a, as a data processing engine before and yet it kind of stepped up to that challenge quite nicely and I was using things like the watchdog logging mechanism to have a a headless view on how it was getting on crunching the data and you know I could get real-time performance information out of the system without having to impact it by writing to the database which was great to you know look at the system logs from that point of view so we we crunched all the results and then we built this massive what we called the bash board which where we measured for example how because because we knew what class of boat people were in we knew how far they'd sailed and we knew how long they'd taken we were able to measure the total distance sailed by everyone, all 30,000 results that we received. And we realized that we had sailed twice around the world with all of this. Oh, that's a putting, fun... Putting all that measurement together. Oh, that's a fun statistic. Yeah. And how many, how many boats raced? 17,000 boats we had results from. And how many p- sailors were involved? 30,000 sailors. Wow. 
And did you, did you, are you in the record book now? Yeah, we, um, not everyone qualified for the Guinness criteria. But yeah, we have, I think, 10,000 is our, is our record for the official Guinness um, certificate that we have. Okay, Drupal made it possible for you to get in the Guinness yeah, Book of World Records. Absolutely. That's pretty fun. So you set the record, you did this amazing thing, you happened to collect uh, money for uh, worthy charity. Well done, all of you, and, and thank you. Drupal was there. What's happening this year? So, what one of the one of the byproducts of the event is we were as a team we were focused very much on the results and the race and, and the world's largest race. What happened on the day at the venues was that they had the best day sailing they had had in years at their clubs independently of this being Bart's Bash. They had more boats on the water than they'd had out on the water in, in 10 years because they had a reason to come on, on the water. And it became this great festival of sailing and everyone was doing barbecues and things around it and really turned it into a big day at their own club. So there was a lot of well, what's happening in 2015. So very quickly we announced 20th, 20th of September this year doing it again. Um, but this time we're not going for the Guinness World Record because we want to enable more clubs, more people to get on the water. And we're doing, we've got two, two new schemes to try and get more people on the water. So one is this concept we're doing called Bart's Buddies, which is where everyone who goes sailing talks to their friend down the pub and says, oh, you must come sailing, but they never actually get round to getting their friend down to the club. So this is giving them a day when they've got an absolute reason to bring their friend along. Okay, bring, bring a friend to sail day. Yeah, and this is where I want to bring my Drupal friends from right. DrupalCon Barcelona. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I volunteer. Excellent. Take me on your boat, please. Uh, yes, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and how is the charity doing in all of this? The charity is doing well. Uh, we raised over a quarter million pounds last year through this one event. Um, they, and it's it's given them a challenge. To be fair, they were originally going to just do a sailing centre in Weymouth but because they've now raised money all around the world and they've we've we've kind of built them a global brand in sailing you know they are now a very recognized organization um, we are looking to build tools online tools to help sailing clubs get out to the schools and market to the schools and organize courses and all of this online software will be built on Drupal. So that, so it's actually, Drupal again is coming back to enable the foundation to deliver on a global scale. Everyone thinking of coming to Barcelona, you can get out on the water, look for Bart's Bash online, because it really sounds like a fun day out. And um, thanks so much for sharing. That's a, such a fascinating uh, uh, story. And, and uh, you know, uh, Drupal and professional sports is really big, mm. and Drupal in NGOs and charities is really big. And Drupal, I mean, Drupal is very successful across so many uh, verticals now. But but I, this is uh, such a really great synergy between technology and and activism and making the world a better place. And and I think you're fun as well. Yeah, and and I think in this case, Drupal has enabled a community totally unrelated to technology to do a networked event. And I think that concept of a global network, I think we're on a, I feel we're on a, um, on a tipping point where the technology is in the hand enough that we can now actually quite easily organize these global events. Um, I mean, we, there were a handful of global events going on in the sporting world already. Um, they have some very big sponsors behind them. And that's how classically they've needed to be organised. Whereas now, this you know th this was organised by lots of individual teams in their home location, and the the cost and the requirement of doing it was very minimal, which was, which was great. So Drupal is really enabling a new kind of of global organising. This is this is a kind of event that never happened before. Yeah. Hmm. So if anybody has some big ideas like this. Um, David will help you set up the technological <laughs> side. He knows how it works now, and he's prepared for unexpected, gigantic success. Absolutely. Hey, <laughs> so great to talk to you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Jam. Cheers.